So Max Becker, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Just to recap, you're age 15 and you are doing sports commentating and sports journalism. Yeah, that's correct. How did the interest spike to jump into this career? Well, the interest spiked sort of in the start, I guess, of COVID 2020. It was around mid-April, late April. And I saw my dad's old microphone that he was originally going to do a business podcast with. Yep. And then so I decided, you know what, I like sports, I'm going to do a sports podcast. And so the first episode we went for about 10, 15 minutes was just me chatting about the effect that COVID-19 had had on sports in the NBA, the NBL, the AFL, that kind of thing. And then as it went on, that was the first episode. By the second episode, my uncle would suggest to me, why don't we get some like sports players and things like that? And, you know, we can take it further and you can interview these people. And so I said, yeah, all right. So we started with his best mate, Lee Jack, who used to play under NBL legend coach Joey Wright for the Brisbane Bullets. And then from him, we were able to get his best mates, Benis Makovic, who's the Boston Celtics uh, European scout. So that was pretty good. Made a pretty good headline for episode three. Um, and then after that, it's kind of I just kind of use my contacts, reach out to people. And once you have a couple of those big names, like a Benis or I get a steel side bottom through my dad's cousin, it makes it a lot easier to get um, names. And as you sort of work your way up through the ranks of names, so if, for example, I get a steel side bottom, then through him I can go to someone like a, a Saints player, I can go to, you know, a Royal Marshall and go, Roland, I've had steel side bottom on, I've had the NBL commissioner Jeremy Laliga on, you know, I've had Craig Hutchinson on, I want to get you on. And then these people go, well, he's only 15, that's one. Mm -hmm. And then they go, well, two, he's done, what is it, 40, 50 episodes, now that's 90, 90 yeah. something. And he's, and he's had th th this person on, this person on, this person on. Then, you know, they're like, well, I, I might be missing out on this. So then through that, and then obviously when I had Chris come on board, um, that was at the, really at the start of 2021. As soon as he came on board, he helped me get, you know, a lot more guys like Andrew Parkinson, um, like Chad Corns, like Sammy Mack, um, who I'm hopefully going to do soon if he doesn't, if he doesn't boot me off. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so it's really kind of just grown from contacts, I guess, and yep. my love of it has just evolved and then, I guess through contacts, once I got to the 50th episode, I wanted to make a big bang. Um, and so I reached out to Craig Hutchison. Mm -hmm. I stayed the night in the city because I had an interview with Los Angeles Lakers um, head of security and Kobe Bryant security guard, John Stern, um, early in the morning. And then got home, checked my phone. Uh, you know how Apple Mail, there's like the little like number. So yeah. I, don't, I don't usually yeah. have too many e ma mails, much e many emails through that email account. So I checked it. I thought oh, I would just probably be like some sort of like news update or whatnot. And then it says Craig Hutchison. I'm like, oh, this is like, this is just unreal, you know? So then I got Hutchie on and then he was on a, he was on a family vacation. So he was, he was expecting, you know, just some 14 year old kid to come in asking questions that, you know, a fan or a normal 14 year old kid might ask, right? And then, so this is actually what he said on his podcast, The Sounding Board with Damien Barrett, um, a week after I interviewed him and released it. He goes, I was just enjoying a nice family vacation and, here, here I am sitting in a little, on a little desk um, being interviewed by this 14 year old kid and I wasn't expected for the strength of his questions. So when I asked him, um, you know, can you take me through the moments of merging, you um, getting together Pacific Star Network, Cross Croc Media, which Pacific Star Network was already pretty much sports entertainment network. Um, and how you merge those companies together. He was, he was a bit baffled, I guess. And because he was so baffled, he was speechless. Um, he, he couldn't really get the words out <laughs> properly because yeah. he because he wasn't expecting it. And then he said on his podcast, Sounding Board with Damien Barrett, it's his personal ambition to get me on air. So then, once I heard that, every few months I'd keep you know emailing him and his assistant Amanda at SEN and going, hey, this is how many listens it's got. This is it's my best ever audience I've got. Um, it's allowed me to get heaps more guests. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you know, your time and Hutchie's time to come on and have a chat. She goes, no worries. And then it got to November, I thought, well, I want it, Chris and I sort of had the idea, let's get some work experience in somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to someone like a Mark Howard. I looked, uh, reached out to Luke Tunnicliffe at Jam TV. I was just reaching out to anyone I, I really could, um, even the NBL Overtime or NBL One show guys. And yep. um, I got a response from Amanda, who's Hutchie's assistant, she goes, well, we've got a lot of requests at SEN for work experience, as you might um, understand, um, but we'll keep you on the list. So I thought, all right, that's all right. And then so it got to early December, I emailed Hutchie just directly and I said, hi Hutchie, um, 
I've got a plan. I've got the next 10 episodes planned out with superstar guests. I've got 10 different sponsors on board to have them engage and they'll pay a $500 sponsorship fee for each episode. These are the 10 sponsors I've got ready. I've got these 10 guests lined up, like superstar guests. Yeah. And I've got, I've, I can do this, this and this. And I said, I just want to get the Sporting Max podcast on the SEN app, which is like, just when you go to podcast on the app, it'll just come up there. Yeah. And then, so he forwarded on to Sam, who's the national radio director at SEM. She, um, she's more of a behind the scenes person. I've actually asked her to come on the podcast, but she's, she's a bit too humble for that. So um, that's all right. Yeah. And so she emailed me and she said, I want to have a meeting. I said, all right. So then we had a meeting in the studios just before I was going away to Queensland over the holidays and walked in. I was just expecting, you know, just try and get the Sporting Max podcast and the SEN app, right? Yeah. Right. And then so she goes, you know what? We'll uh, we'll put we'll give Sporting Max a, a slot each every Sunday at 7 a.m. till 8 a.m. Um, on radio. And I thought, well, this is well, like this is amazing. Like I couldn't believe that that opportunity was right in front of me yeah. and then so I said all right and then she goes there will be a swapping of money though and so I'm sitting there like this I'm like gee how much am I gonna have to pay you and then she goes she goes well, she goes yeah we will be paying you and I'm like whoa I'm like this is unbelievable like I get paid for doing you know what I love to do and like is that the is that the ultimate at the moment is that you're getting paid to do something that you absolutely love doing yeah that's the ultimate at the moment I'm getting paid to do something that I love doing not only just doing my podcast, I'm starting to get paid for that. I'm getting paid for the kids edition now, hosting alongside Ali Blackburn, which I'd, I'd just like to do that, you know, without getting paid, yeah, just for course. the experience. And then yeah. alongside commentating with the Melbourne Tigers and the Geelong Supercats, that's just, that's a bit of fun for me, you know? Like, I don't, I don't expect to get anything out of that, but if I do, you know, that's an extra bonus. Absolutely. Look, your work ethic is absolutely outstanding. Thank and you. you've achieved so much at age 15. What do you see for the future? Well, future goals, I'm starting to, I love my English and maths at school, so whenever I do English, all my mates will like write a little sentence and I'll sit there and I'll sit there for like two or three minutes and just try and just write as much as I can in English. Cause I'm like, I want to be a journalist. I want to be in journalism. I want to write as much detail as I can, as best I can um, in sort of, I guess, a paragraph. Each time I'm writing an answer for any subject, I try and write it, keep it to sort of three to four sentences um, make sure it's not too short so then you know that's incorporating for my my future um, and really my future in journalism and my, my aim goal is you know to stick with SEN I, I love what I'm doing there at the moment if I can I, I'm, my aim is to you know really push this kids edition to be the best alley and I can make it to be and then hopefully some other opportunities um, at SEN will come out of that um, I know Sam Hargraves has jumped on board with me. He's going to help me um, sort of be a bit of a mentor to me. I've got to catch up with him tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it's just great to have the opportunity. Um, I want to get into sort of TV work, um, whether that's with Seven or Fox Sports, even just producing or learning from the producers. Um, yeah, I just want to be involved in that environment. And then I fucking, I really want to, I've started writing some articles just to put out on my website. So then maybe hopefully if someone sees it, um, likes the work that I'm doing, I can hopefully get in there and start writing some articles. You've obviously interviewed quite a lot of people over even just this short period of time. What's been one of the main standouts so far? Yeah, Mark Howard. So um, I was really amazed with him. He gave me some great advice, you know, don't be afraid to go too off script. You've got to memorise your whole thing um, to be able to then be able to go off script so you don't have your questions in front, which is now sort of what I do. So if I can get any guests in the studios, I will, because then if I can get them in the studios, I can build a connection and relationship with them. Um, it's, it's a lot, I find it easier in the studio than online because you can introduce yourself to them face to face. Then you can actually get in, start recording. You get to know them a bit more. And then after that, you can go through them for other contacts too, because they know you a lot better and they know who you are. Um, the main standout, how he taught me, you know, you can go off the script and especially in the studios, I can, if I've memorised my script, I've got that, I, I just, I've just got that for reference, you know, I've got my dot points, I've got my questions just for reference if I need them at all. Um, so I, I try and make as much conversation as I can, listen to their answers, you know, go off, um, whatever they give me. And then also Jared Waitley, who I've just had on, he gave me some great advice, um, especially being in a studio, you know. Um, how to set up, how to you know sit in a chair, how to sit in a chair, um, 
and make sure you're getting the best quality out of your voice um, for live radio. So when you reflect back to when it all started, when you found your dad's microphone, did you ever expect any of this? Was this no. like, you know, your, your ultimate dream? Not when I first started. So when I first started, it was like, I want to be an NBL basketballer. I want to be a basketballer. And then as I um, sort of grew and started getting more and more guests, mm. I was like, no, nah, I I, that's, un, that's an unrealistic goal and that's an unrealistic dream. And then I'm like, I just want to be a reporter and I want to be a journalist. And so when I knew that, I'm like, yep, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm going to work as hard as I can and do everything in my power to be able to get to where I want to go, which is at the moment where I am right now. And if you asked me two years ago, do you think you'd be sitting in the SEN studios or sitting here at Hoop City being interviewed um, for just, you know, doing a podcast and working on live radio? I would have said, you know, you're, you're absolutely kidding me. So I obviously reached out to you a couple of weeks back and told you a bit about Stitch Untitled and, and what we stand for. How does that resonate with you? Because not for the faint-hearted, I'm, I'm, I'm a goer, I like to work. I can't just sit there and you know do nothing. I've always got to be um, keep my mind active. I've always got to be doing something. So if I'm not doing something, I'm just like bored and just sitting there. I'm like, no, I'm like, let's let's go out, let's play some basketball. Let's see so if at school I've got any free time. I'm sitting there on my computer and I'm going. Um, I'm, email, I'm trying to email just anyone I possibly can, message anyone I can to try and get them on, mm. even on the Kids Edition or on Sporting Max podcast, just constantly, yeah, just trying to work for myself and for my future. And then I've also planned out with school subjects too this year in year nine with my electives to be selective and not choose things that are fun and choose things, I uh, don't really want to do the funnest things like in school, I want to do things that are going to help me going into the future and into hopefully a media career, um, which I've already sort of hopefully started. <laughs> hey, your, your career is, is going places. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. You. Like Thank you've you. achieved so much. You should be proud of yourself. Are you proud of yourself? Yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty proud of myself, but I don't, I don't reflect on you know, my success too much. Just focus on what's in front of me and what, what work I've got to do and where I've got to, where I've got to actually got to get to. Then speaking about success, is there anyone along the way, um, I guess, that you would say thanks to or that you feel like has really made an impact in your journey and to where you've got to now? Yeah, mum and dad, for starters. You yeah. know, they drive me around everywhere. They drive me around to, I guess, they drive me here. They drive me to the city every, every Saturday night for a Sunday morning 8 a.m. show to get there at 7 o'clock in the morning. All yeah. the early mornings they go through, you know, just to get me to get me into the city from down from Port Arlington and Geelong Way is incredible and um, yeah I'm so grateful for them and then I'm also so grateful to Chris over there um, who's yeah really helped me along the way um, in pursuing a media career you know he does a lot of things for me and over the past year he's done so much work just to help me develop my skills and you know learn. What is it that pushes you in your career? What pushes me in my career? That's a, that's a great question. Um, so when I get out of bed, I just think, you know, this is, I set out my day the night before, this is what I'm going to do tomorrow. This, I've got to do this at this time, this at this time, this at this time. As soon as I get home from school, I've got this interview, I'm going to write these questions. I'm going to prepare for Sunday morning show. I'm going to give this person a call. I might give Chris a call, um, check in to see how else we can get, see how he is. Um, you know, just and like I said before, whatever is in front of me, that's the only thing I'm focused on. Um, so if I've got the kids edition in front of me, I'm going to grab the bull by the horns and work as hard as I can to make other opportunities come um, out of this small opportunity. Like I said, grab the bull by the horns. If there's something in front of you, don't be like, I get, I get a bit nervous sometimes, um, or I used to going into some interviews. Once you start getting some guests, or once you start knowing some people, sometimes you can get nervous coming into different places if you haven't, you know, been done a run done a play-by-play -play commentary before mm. if you haven't you know spoken to anyone um, in media before it gets it can get a bit I get it, I sometimes get a bit nervous now I'm also get um, pretty excited um, for these kinds of opportunities yeah. but my, my main advice is just to look what's in front of you and you know if, say I want to achieve this well what have I got to do to really you know put myself at work to achieve this do I I've got to get out of bed early in the morning, can I do that? Yes, I can do that because I can just set my alarm. Can I jump in the car and drive half hour, an hour to achieve my goals? Yes, well, I can do that if you, if you don't have an injury or anything like that, obviously. Can I um, email, spend the 
time at night, during the morning, during the day, to email everyone, just see what other opportunities I can get. And if you can do that and then, you know, make yourself excited and pumped up for any for any events you have coming up, then I think that's that's my main advice. Absolutely great advice too. How do you celebrate the wins? Um I I usually just go and tell my dad and, and my mum and yeah. my family and then sort of just sit back and then just keep working. I don't I don't like to celebrate, you know, big guests I've had on too much or like I keep it really quiet at school so I don't go around telling anyone I've got a podcast or anything so my mate who I, who I met this year he's just skipped year seven gone into year nine um, and he's he didn't know about it so so he found it just online and he was just searching he just searched up my name it was just random right and he just searched up my name he goes mate he's like what's this he's like all this just like weird information's come up. I'm like, yeah, that's me. I'm like, that's me. And then he's like, he's like, what? He's like, how come you don't tell me about this? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't like to tell too many people about it. So then the year nine coordinators come up to me and he's gone, well, I've just seen a post on the footy club's um, Facebook. And, you know, I like, I like what you're doing. I've heard about you. Um, I want to advertise it to the year nines. I said, I said, do we have to advertise it to the year nines? He goes, well, I think it'd be good. I said, well, you can do it if you want. I said, I like to keep things on the down low. I said, I said, I like to go about my business pretty quietly and yeah, things like that. So you're obviously an inspiration to a lot of other kids around you then? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I'm not in their shoes or in their perspective. I just, and my mates just treat me like normal. So have a bit of a joke around, have a shoot around with them. I would, I would say you're absolutely inspirational and not just for the kids at your school, but the kids everywhere else and, and even adults. I think your work ethic is absolutely amazing and I wish you nothing but the best for the future. Thanks so much, Taryn. Thanks, Max. Thank you so much. That was awesome.